no, no! You say the same thing every day. Just once I wish you'd show up and tell me something I want to hear. We're doing all we can, my king. We have every available man searching for him. Then find men that aren't available. Double your effort. That's impossible. If the Philistines find out how weak we are to the east, we'll Where be is he, Abner? Where is David? Where? Find him! Take all the men if you must. Let there be no place for him to hide from sea to sea. Drag him here and make him kneel before me. This is your only task. The most important thing in all of Israel. Find him, Abner. Find him now, now, now! Saul's jealousy has made him lose his marbles, and David is on the run. If you were hoping this part of the story was going to be slow and peaceful, you're going to be sorely disappointed. Resolved to this path I can't escape I am desperate, how long till I break? I want to wreak havoc every moment I'm awake That boy is a snake I must control the outcome though Things are looking grim I can't lose my throne, especially to him The kingdom may be lost but I will not give in If I end him now there's still a chance I win So I will hunt him down until my final breath I will fight for what is mine And I will celebrate his death If I must, I'll burn it all Until everything is lost I will do what must be done I will win at any cost I'll take everything down with me And I will win at any cost I'm the one who built him up And I will be the one to tear him down again he stabbed me in the back and now he thinks to steal my crown I will do him in He can run and he can hide but one day he'll be found And when that day arrives I'll put him in the ground The kingdom may be lost but I will not give in If I end him now there's still a chance I win You are tormenting me from afar, I no longer know where you are. Hear me now, on my life I vow that boy will not get far. I blame you for my rage, discarded when I made a mistake. Since you are gone from me, David will have to be the one who I'll make pay. So I will hunt him down until my final breath I will fight for what is mine and I will celebrate his death If I must, I will burn it all until everything is lost I will do what must be done, I will win at any cost I'll take everything down with me And I will win at any cost Things are getting desperate for David. There's danger around every corner. He's tired, hungry, and seems not to have a friend in the world. When it all starts falling apart around you, it's not always easy to remember where your strength comes from. Right now, David has let his trust in God slip away. Have you ever done that? How did it work out for you? Because for David, it's led him here. Nah, the city of the priests. Now I know what you're thinking. This is good, right? Maybe he's here to get some much needed guidance. Oh, how I wish that was true. No, sir. He's here to get supplies. And the only way he's going to get them is by lying. Now, I don't know about you, 
But to me, lying to a bunch of priests doesn't sound like it'd be part of God's plan. Lying to save yourself is pretty much the opposite of trusting in God, and no good can come from it. Good morning, brother. 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 Uh, Ahimelech. Ah, Doeg. Good morning, brother. Yeah, yeah, good morning. Hey, listen, I'm really hoping you guys can do me a favor. I'm in a desperate situation. Of course, Doeg. What seems to be the problem? Good morning, brother. Good morning, brother. And good morning to you, brother. Morning. My men and I were grazing the king's sheep in the hill country, and a a huge storm blew in and scattered the flock everywhere. Oh, that was a nasty storm, wasn't it? Good morning, brother. Good morning, brother. Uh, And good morning, brother. Yes, good morning. It's put us several days behind, and we've completely run out of supplies. My men are starving. Oh, dear. That's terrible. I was really hoping I could... Good morning, brother. Good morning, brother. Good morning, brother. Yes, okay, good morning. We need food, Ahimelech. Can you help us? Oh, Doeg, as you know, this is the city of priests. We have no supplies here. Good morning, brother. Good morning, brother. Good morning, brother. Yeah, hi. How are you? What about the bread, Ahimelech? Everybody knows you have bread here. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. I'm so sorry, Doeg. You know I can't give you that bread. Good morning, brother. Good morning, brother. Good morning. Uh, Yes, good morning. That's the Lord's bread. It's been consecrated. But this is an emergency, Ahimelech. My men are turning on me. But Jerusalem is just a mile down the road. You can find all the supplies you need there. I can't go to Jerusalem yet. The guys will tell everybody that I messed up again. If Saul... Good morning, brother. Good morning, brother. Good morning. Good. I already said good morning to you. Listen, Saul hates me. I can't do anything right in his eyes. If my men go back complaining about me again, who knows what Saul will do to me? Good morning, brother. Uh, Okay, listen up. Can I have everybody's attention, please? Everybody? Uh, You, you guys over there. Can you all hear me? Good morning. I'm saying good morning to all of you at once. Good morning. I hope you all have a pleasant day. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. I'm sensing that you're feeling stressed. I'm going to lose everything I have, Ahimelech. Please give me some of that bread. I'm sorry, Doeg, but I can only give the Lord's bread away in matters of life and death. But this is a matter of life and death. I'm on a mission for the king. Oh, why didn't you say so? How exciting! What's your mission? I'm driving the king's sheep. Oh, is that considered a mission now? Uh, Good morning, brother. Good morning, brother. Good morning, brother. My life is over. I'm going to lose my job. There, there, Doeg. Have faith. The Lord will provide for you and your men. Would you like me to pray a blessing on you? Actually, that would be very nice. Things just haven't been going well for me lately, and I... Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. David, what are you doing here all alone? And where are your men? Are you all right? It's okay, Ahimelech. I'm fine. Really. Nothing to worry about. I'm on a mission for the king. No way. How exciting. Two kingly missions in the same day. Doeg's here too. Doeg, look who's here. It's David. David? Oh, uh, David. Oh, uh, um, mm, ha. Hey, David. It's David. David's here. David is here. Eh, Good morning, brother. Doeg. (laughs) Boy, it's good to see you. Always a pleasure. You know what? I'm just going to head out. Don't worry about the supplies, Ahimelech. The Lord provides. (sighs) Actually, Ahimelech, my mission is kind of a secret. Let's keep it between me and you, okay? Oh, dear me. I'm so sorry. No problem at all. But time is of the essence. My men are waiting for me at a place I can't disclose to you. I'm sure you understand. Of course. Now, what food do you have on hand? Give me five loaves of bread or or whatever you can find. Oh, David, you know the only bread here is the bread of the presence. It's been consecrated. I can't. Ahimelech, this is a matter of life and death. 
You can trust me. The Lord will forgive you. All right. Uh, wonderful. Five loaves of bread coming right up. Oh, and there's one more thing. We left in such a hurry, top secret mission and all, I forgot all my weapons back at the house. Um, you don't happen to have a sword or something laying around, do you? Oh, dear, I... I don't think so. We're priests. We have no need for weapons here. Man, are you sure? What, a sword hidden away somewhere? Well, we do have Goliath's sword. <laughs> wow, that's right. I totally forgot that was here. Saul would be furious if I gave it to anyone else. It's sort of a national treasure after all, but... I suppose if anyone should be allowed to use it, it should be you, right? You think so? I mean, I did kill the giant, right? If you're on a mission for the king, then I think it's the right thing to do. Great idea, Ahimelech. There's no other sword like it in the land. I'll take it. You'll be rewarded handsomely for this. Good morning, brother. Good morning, sister. It's ironic, isn't it? David hoping Goliath's sword would protect him? didn't seem to work that well for Goliath. It may seem innocent enough, but it's a sure sign David isn't putting his faith in God anymore. Deception has a way of taking on a life of its own. Yes, sir. I suppose it's easy for one lie to lead to another once you start down that road. And speaking of roads, David is running out of them. In fact, there was no place in Israel where he felt safe. So his lack of trust led him to do the craziest thing of all. He left God's people behind and crossed the border into the land of their enemy. He went to the Philistines, to King Achish to be exact. Now Achish was a Philistine king that was known for being kind of an oddball. You're telling me there's not a single grape in the entire land? All I want is some grapes? Go wherever they have grapes and get me some. He's one of those people that wants everyone to know how smart they are, even though they aren't that smart. I'm surrounded by ineptitiousness. Your lack of ability is atrociable. David thought he might be the one Philistine that might take him in, so he dove headfirst into the enemy's nest. Oh, I sure hope he has an exit strategy. What's the world coming to when a king can't order up some grapes? I'm king. I should get whatever I want. Frankly, it's calling. Uh, I'm totally called. And what's that noise? What's going on? My king, we have a situation. There's an Israelite here seeking asylum. Seeking who? I don't know anybody by that name. No. My king, he wants to stay here for a while for protection. Well, then why didn't you say that in the first place? Bring him in here. I'll talk to him. I don't think that's a good idea, sire. This particular Israelite... I am not paying you to think, am I? Actually, you are, sir. I I'm your chief advisor. Bring him in here! Do as I say! You better watch yourself, Mr. Chief Advisor. That was very nearly insupportability. I won't have it! Step forward, young man. My king, there's something you should know. Enough from you. He can speak for himself. What is it you've come to inquisify about? Good King Achish, you are famous among the people of Israel. I have heard of your infinite wisdom and your unequivocal use of vocabulary. What's that mean? It means no one else talks like you, sir. I like him already. Continuate! I am but a poor shepherd who has fallen into ill favor with the king of my people. I beg for you to allow me to stay here in your land. In return, I will serve you faithfully. I am also an accomplished musician, and I'll humbly play for you if you'd like. I have experience playing for kings. Oh, that sounds delightly. You could play for me while I'm eating lunch if I could ever get some grapes. It'd be nice to have someone around here that knows the meaning of good service. But why do you look so familiar to me? I have no idea, my liege. I am just a quiet shepherd, minding my own business. My king. You know what it is? You kind of remind me of a young me. Strapping, handsome young man. My king. You know, you're really pushing my buttons today. My king, that's David. So? Never heard of him. Yes, you have, my king. That's the David that killed Goliath. 
Doesn't ring a bell. He's the general over all the armies of Israel. Many call him the king of the land. The people sing a song about Saul killing his thousands and David his tens of thousands. Oh yeah, I love that song. It's about killing us, your majesty. Tens of thousands of Philistines. What? I didn't know that. That's despicuous. He's the guy? Yes, sire. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's Goliath's sword he has right there. What kind of raveling lunatic would risk his life like this? Are you kidding me? You've got to be crazy. Crazy? Don't call me crazy. <laughs> I'm not crazy. Crazy? I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. Oh, 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 is this your bird? Oh, I love birds. You're such a pretty bird. Yes, you are. Pretty bird. Oh, pretty bird. What's going on? Why is he talking to that vase? I'm very uncomfortable. <laughs> you want to know a secret? I'm a bird too. I'm a pretty bird. Watch me fly high above your heads. Kaka! Kaka! That's my lunch. He, he's pecking at my lunch. This is preposterous and imbecilian. Why did you bring this madman in here? My king, we should take him prisoner and use him against the Israelites. Can't you see he's out of his mind? He, he's a dog now. He's drooling on my floor. Get him out of here before he transfades into something else. But my king... Have I so few madmen around here that you want to bring in another one? What's he going to do? Curl up in my seat? Get him away from me! What if this is an act? This is ludicrous. <laughs> Throw him out of the city. He's creeping me out. Go! Uh, I'm a bird. I'm a dog. I'm a bird dog. God God It was a pleasure to meet you. Did you see that? Guy was out of his mind. When he was a dog. That whole thing was ridiculous. Well, that was some quick thinking on David's part. But for a man who's supposed to become king, it was pretty undignified. David ran from the Philistines with his tail between his legs. He was tired, ashamed, drifting. Lies, lies, and more lies. But at least he was able to fool one crazy king. And if you think that king was crazy, how about a little juxtapositiousness? We've chased every lead, my king. But they've turned up nothing. The people aren't talking. No one seems to have seen a thing. You think I don't know, Abner? You think I don't know you're all conspiring against me? No one will tell me where he is. Just like no one would tell me he made a pact with my own son. You're supposed to be my loyal friends. I've given you homes and fields, made you all rich. You think David's gonna do the same? When he takes power, you'll all be dead. How did he get to you? Is there no one in this land still loyal to its king? My king! My king! I have news about David! Doeg, tell me where he uh, is. Um, well, I, I can't say where he is now. But I saw him <gasps> with, with my own two eyes. No doubt, it was him. Definitely him. Just yesterday. Tell me! He was at Nob. He met with Ahimelech, the priest. Ahimelech prayed with him and, and gave him food. Oh, and the sword of Goliath, the Philistine! The priest helped him? How do we know this is true? Uh, of course it's true. I, I don't know where he went from there, but Ahimelech might. Bring them to me! Ahimelech! The priests! All of them! As you wish, my king. David sure seems to have a knack for upsetting kings. And as you can imagine, it's made it difficult to stay hidden. In his mind, the best thing for everyone involved is for him to stay as far away as possible, which has left him feeling profoundly alone. But what he doesn't know is a lot of people are cheering for him. When some of them found out he was living right here in the cave of Adullam, the word began to spread. 
Secretly, murmurs of excitement began to build. People whispered of joining him, and it didn't take long for word to get back to his family. Hey, David, I think somebody's looking for you. My brothers. But how? Eliab. David, I can't believe we found you. <laughs> Me either. How did you know where I was? You've got more friends than you know, brother. Yeah, David, we're not alone. Uh, what does that mean? It means King Saul isn't the only one looking for you. People are looking for you too. What? Why? What did I do to them? <laughs> no, they don't want to kill you, David. I don't think. They want you to be their leader, brother. They want to follow you. <laughs> what? Follow me? Follow me where? King Saul has made a lot of enemies, David. He rages uncontrollably, punishing people for nothing, taking farms, raising taxes. And there are a lot of good people who just aren't going to take it anymore. Those people have chosen you to be their king. I... I don't know what to say. I mean, I live in a cave, Eliab. Like an animal. I'm not ready to be anybody's king. Who better to lead them than you? A man blessed by God. The giant killer. The finest warrior I ever saw. You're missing the point. Uh, I'm a fugitive. That's not what the people say. The people say you're a man after God's own heart. Uh, that's because they don't know. They haven't seen me out here, hunted, scared. I've done things I'm definitely not proud of. Every night, I hide and beg God to have mercy on me, to deliver me from this madness. Yet, somewhere along the way, my fear became more powerful than my faith. But I'm trying. Being here alone has given me time to think. Reflect. There's nothing I want more than to be that man that you think I am. God knows my heart is still with him. And I know he's still with me. I, I can feel him. My faith grows stronger every day. <laughs> and now he's brought us together again. What more is required to know God is still protecting me? Tell the people to be patient. I'm not ready to lead yet, but give me a few weeks to prepare and make a plan. God will show me what to do. And this is where it gets a little bit awkward. Why? What does that mean? Uh, you remember those people we were talking about? The ones that are fed up? Yeah. Well, a few of them are kind of already here. What do you mean here? Just over that ridge? And what do you mean, a few? Oh, not not many, just a handful, really. Wouldn't you say, Shema, a handful? Depends on how big your hands are, I guess. Guys, how many exactly? Uh, 400 men. And their wives and children. And animals. What? Mom and dad are here, too. Mom and dad? Are you guys crazy? They're all scared, David. And how is this going to help? You think I can protect you? I can hardly hide myself. Where are we going to put 400 men? And their wives and children. And animals. You're not helping. Saul is obsessed with you, David. He's tearing apart the country looking for you. He's been harassing father for months. How long before he finds a reason to imprison him? Or worse, you know that's coming. We can't stay home. None of us can. Yeah, I know. You're right. But they can't stay here either. Saul's definitely going to find out about this. <sighs> Go organize them. They need to be ready to move at a moment's notice. We'll see if the Moabites will take in mom and dad. Beyond that, I don't know. I need time to think and pray. We'll make it happen. I know this is dangerous, brother. But we will be stronger together. I know we will. <laughs> I have prayed for the day when I would hear you say that, Eliab. 
praise God for helping you find me. He is our protection and our strength. I've let you down so many times, Lord, but you're still with me. Thank you. They say I'm a hero now. Their words haunt me and I doubt I could live up to their expectations. Ashamed and weak, I do not see why they would believe in me. Feels like I'm an imitation. No one can see. I'm broken down I still feel alone in this crowd They celebrate, they shout and cheer for man Who is it here? They all believe While I'm in fear, they need a man Who is it here? Sometimes it feels I cannot breathe if only they knew what lies beneath The guilt overwhelms me like a wave I remember having faith in God Now it feels like I'm a fraud But what I've done, I cannot change No one can see I'm broken down crowd they celebrate they shout and cheer for a man who isn't here they all believe while I'm in fear they need a man who isn't here alone I've been weak alone I've been desperate But I'm not alone Oh no, I never was I was lost in myself But not to your love And now everything Is so clear to me You sent them all To encourage me So I will celebrate I'll shout and cheer for this miracle I witness here, Lord, thank you For staying near and reminding me You are still here No one can see I'm broken But I thank God that I was never alone Ahimelech, and all the priests of Nob. Good morning, brother. 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 Good Enough! Morning. How dare you? You call yourselves holy men, and then you conspire against God's chosen king? My king, no! You stab me in the back by making deals with David? Giving him food? Weapons? Praying with him, making him stronger. You want to see him defeat me like all the rest of them? My king, I don't know what to say. You say nothing, traitor. But it's David, my king, the captain of your armies. Who's more trustworthy than him, honored in your house? You haven't prayed with me in months. Yet you take in my greatest enemy and lie to my face about it. No one told us we shouldn't, my lord. I swear, and I'll pray with you whenever you want. You never come see us anymore. Silence! You know what you've done. And you know the price you will pay. I don't know anything about this, my king. Please have mercy on us. The time for mercy is gone. You will die today. 
You and your families and your entire bloodline ends now. You knew David was fleeing from me and you didn't inform me. Let all of Israel see what happens to those who defy me. Empty out the city of Nob. Kill them all. What? Kill them. Do it now. I will not, my king. Nor will my men. Obey my orders, you disrespectful dog. We will not raise our swords to unarmed priests of God. This is madness. You refuse a direct order from God's anointed king? Every last one of you is a traitor. Doeg, take up a sword and kill these men you've brought before me. Me? I I'm just a shepherd. Prove your loyalty, and I will make you powerful beyond measure. Powerful? You'll be the greatest among my men. Do it. Yeah? Kill them all, Doeg. Leave no one alive. Kill them now. No, Doeg, stop! I'll spare you the details. They aren't pretty. It was the worst thing that could have possibly happened. Doeg did the deed. There was no one left alive in the city of Nob. Almost. There was one that managed to escape. Ahimelech had a son named Abiathar who slipped away undetected. The right people took him in and it wasn't long before they got him to David. Now when David heard what his lies had caused, he was overwhelmed with grief. He wept for days, wouldn't eat, could barely stand. His lies... His mistakes, his fault. He was inconsolable. But after a while, David's brothers convinced him they had to keep moving. Saul was in hot pursuit. And over the next few months, Saul chased them all over the countryside, almost got him once or twice. There just weren't a lot of places for David to hide his now 600 men, their wives and children, and animals. By the time they got here, the caves of Engedi, there was nowhere left to run, trapped between Saul's advancing army and the Dead Sea. So when Saul and his army stopped by the oasis to water their animals, there was nothing they could do but hide and wait. It was only a matter of time before Saul would know they were there. If you men have any dignity left, you'll gather supplies quickly. I know David is nearby. He has to be. Of course, my king. Now, I need some time to think. Leave me be. David, this could have been over. It wasn't the right thing to do. This is what God promised you. You should have taken what is yours. Your will is not the same as God's. You think I wasn't tempted after what he's done? If anyone deserves retribution, it's Saul. But following my own mortal instincts is exactly what got me here in the first place. 
God forbid I raise a hand against his anointed. I'm ashamed that I even cut his robe. God still chose him to be king and God will choose when he's not. What better time is there than right now to step out in faith and know God will protect us? My Lord, the King, why do you listen to people who say I'm trying to harm you? You can see for yourself that it's all lies. I lay my life before you and before the God of heaven. I am your true servant. David, is that you? I could have killed you. I was right here in this cave with you the whole time. My men urged me to do it, but I didn't. And this is all the proof you need. <laughs> I was only feet from you and I did not strike. I mean you no harm. I will not raise a hand against God's anointed king and I never will. David. Please, my king, I am no threat to you. You're out here looking for a lifeless dog, a single flea. I am nothing. God can see into our hearts and he alone will judge us both. Let him prove my heart is true by saving me from your hand. <laughs> How is this even possible? The Lord delivered me into your hands. But you showed mercy. So this is why God has chosen you. You are far more righteous and upright in his eyes than I ever was. I've been nothing but evil to you. But you've always been good to me. And you've shown me again today. You could have killed me. Why didn't you kill me? May the Lord reward you for your merciful heart. And when you become king, I beg of you, may you continue to show mercy upon my family and my family's name. is never going to be the same after this. That's the look of a broken man, and not broken by David, but by his own conscience. Despite all his insane jealousy and stubbornness, deep down Saul knows the truth. The Lord does see the heart. He does know the motives. And he will forgive you all your sins if he sees your heart is truly sorry. All you have to do is choose for him to be there. And that's why Saul's broken. He knows the choice he's made. That's exactly the difference between Saul and David. Saul won't allow himself to be sorry. He cares more about what humans think of him than he does about what God thinks of him. But David, despite all his flaws, David still truly wants to be a man after God's own heart. He makes that choice again and again. He humbles himself and he's truly sorry and God blesses him for it. Saul continues to sink lower while David continues to be lifted higher. You starting to get the picture? Well, don't look away because we are not out of the woods yet. mercy on me. You have the power over life and death. I take refuge in the shadow of your wings 
and trust in your faithfulness. Lord, you know everything in my nature is revealed in your light. Lord, take my will and cleanse my heart. Let my life be pleasing in your sight. Teach me to be like you. So great is your love for me, so great is your love for me, so great. 